Right, hello gentle listeners again, hello. Right, um, okay. Now, I have picked up one of these. It is a Crusade mission pack, Beyond the Veil. Now, Crusade, uh, if you don't know anything about it, uh, just very quick, quick um, talk about Games Workshop games, uh, Warhammer 40k, in this, in this instance. There are usually multiple ways to play. Um, so I think Age of Sigmar has that, but obviously I'll be getting more into Age of Sigmar next year, hopefully, hopefully. No promises, but it's definitely an ambition. Um, an ambition, meaning you're not going to do it. No, I, I'm definitely going to try and do it. I just need to get things moving a little bit easier on certain other things as well. Uh, all to play for. No rush. Uh, I don't think anyone's going anywhere. Well, hopefully you're not, um, but there you go. If you are, then well, you must be doing something wonderful. Thank you very much for all of the time you have listened. So, um, right, so there are multiple ways of playing Warhammer 40k. You, uh, the one element which is very loud, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, nothing wrong with that. But if you go online, you will see a lot about competitive play. That's uh, matched play, uh, they're slightly different. And it's basically, you've got the same amount of points as I have, and we'll play a match to see which player, which army, is better. Bang. Obviously, there are dice involved, so saying it's actually you've heard that. you've heard this from me before. I think it's silly to to try not to play competitively. Don't get me wrong, but to say that it should be a balanced game. There is one chess. Um, it's got dice in it. It'll never be balanced. So, either way, just my personal perspective. I really should stop banging on about it. But I'm still knackered. Right. So, one of the other ways of playing is called Crusade. So instead of things being absolutely uh, a, a very heavy confrontation between you and the other player, I personally believe that it's more about the troops on the board and telling a story. So obviously being a yarn master as well, well as a waffler, um, obviously I prefer that kind of play. And uh, it's one of those things, I like telling little stories on the board with my little men, so why not? But again, there's nothing wrong with the other way of doing things. Everything is equally valid. There's nothing like a good competitive game with someone of your own skill level or above, personally. Uh, I prefer to people who play people who will beat me, if, if, if I can, because it's I learn more. But only within that setting. Now, this is for narrative play. It's a mission pack for Crusade. Crusade is where you take a small fraction of an army, or the beginnings of an army, and then after that, you build up the mythos around them. So it's very much more about storytelling, role, bit of role playing almost with your army. And that for me is a lot, it's very, very exciting. Um, I love doing it. It's, it. I don't, people say, oh, you're a voice actor. No, I, I don't think I am. Uh, I've never been paid for it. Well, apart from obviously what I'm doing now. So, and I've got no background in it. I like to think I am a role player. I just role-play the characters, because if you turn around and say, I am an actor, suddenly everything gets a bit silly, and people start putting on silly voices and being over the top, and you're like, oh, calm down. It's just another person. Be you being that person instead. Anyway. Right. So, I role-play. I'm not an actor. Not a voice actor. Um, oh. Oh, not again. <sighs> I am not going to break this, so I am going to go and get a kniffy, a knife. Knife, knife, kniffy, 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 knife. Now, it is armed. It has a kniffy. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent day. As it tries to get back into position. <laughs> All right. Well, cut some of that then. Okay. So. Very careful. If I can. Hello. Right. Be very careful if I can. Make a little cut cut. And push some off. Alright, and uh, put that away. Otherwise, I'm a bit tired and I might cut myself. Well, it would have been probably amusing to some. Uh, weirdos. Now, let's have a look. Okay, so this is the first crusade book I have even taken a look into. I haven't really watched any reviews on them, etc. Because, uh, as I said, I've been saving up for a very long time um, for 9th edition. So, being very frugal. And obviously haven't been going out because of 
the thing. Uh, so there we go. I don't have a car, so there. Right, defensiveness over. Uh, yes, I do feel sometimes defensive that I, I do actually buy things. It is technically my job now. It is how I pay my bills, which is why sometimes there's a lot of videos out. But um, I can think of worse ways of doing things. Okay, so, Warhammer 40k, Warhammer 40,000, Crusade, Mission Pack, Beyond the Veil. I'm also hoping for some lore, I have to admit. I have to admit. So, let us see what one gets. Let us see. Okay. Can we see that properly? Lovely piece of Necron art produced by the Warhammer Studio. With thanks to the Infinite Circuitry for their additional playtesting services. Oh, thanks very much, Infinite Circuit. Sorry, Infinity Circuit. Infinity Circuit. My mistake, sorry about that. Right. Okay, contents. I won't look at that too much, obviously, like before, because I want to see it. Introduction. Okay, well, this is the first book, so I'm going to read this one out. Welcome to the Beyond the Veil mission pack. This is a narrative play mission pack for Crusade armies. On the following pages, you will find a whole host of missions that your Crusade army can be dispatched on as they investigate, exploit, or perpetuate the sinister happenings within the Pariah Nexus, which we know all about because we read it out, didn't we? And we all enjoyed that together. I did like that. Um, oh, ooh. right. Still words. The Pariah Nexus, bit of fluffy fluff. Yummy, yummy. Nice new art, but we've seen them before. But even so, always good, always good. Was on Pariah. Yes, Blackstorm Pylons. All good, all good. All right. Beyond the Veil Games. Select battle size. Uh, determine mission. Then after that, read mission briefing. Determine theatre of war effects. So I see they'll be in here. Must are your eyes. Select agendas. These will be your... Uh, ooh. Secondary objectives, I believe, but I will check that. Create the battlefield. Yummy. I love that. Rules telling you, as a base, again, all rules are just rules. They're suggestions. They are not meant to be, as far as I'm concerned anyway, some strange person who works in a building in Nottingham telling me how to spend my spare time. Um, what I do is I take their rules and I play with them. And the only thing I do not like, I ignore. Um, undermine attacker and defender. Place objective undermine. The players roll off, and the winner decides who will be the attacker and who will be. Oh, determined, not undermine. I don't know what's wrong with me. I must be knackered. Right, declare reserves and transports. Okay, all good fun so far. Now the way of setting up a game. Deploy armies. I, th I do like the fact that they've made it step by step like this. Um, update crusade cards. Determine victor. So, there's a lot of, some, sometimes a lot of bigger uh, books had previously a lot of uh, supposition, that, assumption, that you will know what you were doing. Oh dear, sorry. Uh, it's one of those strange tripods, which is very difficult to get into the right angle. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, whereas I like sometimes, just sometimes, for it to be spelled out so you can just, when it, two of you have had an incredibly busy month. You're both absolutely exhausted. You agree to play with each other, but someone, because they're tired, gets a bee in their bonnet about something. Having these things so you can just sit down and say, let's not argue. Let's find out, old chap. Let's just have a quick look. I want to know now as much as you do. Make it non-confrontational and say, let's find out together. What you're saying sounds cool. I love it, but let's check. Because otherwise we won't be able to play with other people in the same way. Um, right, and then after that you've got the step-by-step -step guide, absolutely spelling out what you need to do. Yes, well done. Also, if your first time opening this up, you've never played with anyone else, etc. It all must be absolutely maddening. It's, it seems huge. It's never as large as it looks. Because you don't have to remember everything. You don't. Just the bits that are relevant for what you're doing at that time. In and out. Shadow Operations. Uncover the answers. Martial forces. All very good. Warpcraft. 
Ah, through the stillness. Special rules on psychic effects. Uh, keep a thorough, uh, keep us through the stillness tally for each psychic unit from your army. Each time a unit successfully completes the through the stillness psychic action, add one to the units through the stillness tally. Right, so a little bit of bookkeeping in the crusade. But you know what? That can be an amazing thing. If you don't see it as a chore, and you see it as a vista, you're creating your own book like this about your faction. Should you do it? No. Could you do it? Yes. Never should. Could. And for people who are our collectors, painters, and players, it's so wonderful to have the background to your army. When they do something on the battlefield, they gain a little tribute or something. It then allows you to go back to that figure. If you are one of those high-grade painters or hobbyists, again, I will never claim I'm high-grade. I am not. I'm, I'm bottom tier. I like to play. I like to read the law and talk about it. I like to run campaigns and all such things. And while everybody else is painting. So they all turn up with wonderful armies and I go, oh, darn it, I forgot something. Um, but there's only so much time in the day. And there's only so many elements of any hobby everyone can enjoy. But it's a broad church and let us keep it that way. I have every respect for a painter, collector, or even someone who just, well, I just like to buy them and have them. Totally up to you. If you actually open up your cupboard and just bask every now and again, like a dragon sitting sitting on your pile of gold. If you do that, more part of you. If you just put them in a cupboard, well, we'll get them out and play them, old chap. But again, only a point of view. Right, battle scars. So when something has occurred, um, they can actually be injured. And that's, that's wonderful for kit bashing. It's wonderful for taking and modifying models again. It, it gives them depth. It gives them character. And that's what it's all about. Escapism, character, anything that makes you intersect with your army. Investigating the prior nexus. In Beyond the Veil, your crusade army can investigate the happenings of the prior nexus. Keeping an additional note of your army's prior Nexus investigation points. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? So you're doing battles, you're building up not only the saga of your army, but you're finding out what's going on. You're playing your own Scooby-Doo. Yes. Right. Theatre of War. Strategic setbacks. Afflictions. Ooh. I like this. Obviously, I need to drill down on it, read it more. Uh, and again, there are a million other sites which would tell you all of the numerous game effects of what's going on here. We all know I'm here as a, a, a waffler and as a guide. Um, again, you start with a site like mine. I guide you through the beginnings and then after that you go out and you hone down and go to more specific sites. And if you just want to get into the playing side of it, which I fully endorse as we all know, then there are a wealth sites out there which will give you unit by unit breakdowns uh, tell you everything you need to know and they're great fun to have one in the background while you're painting your hobbying or doing anything else all right crusade missions right survey and secure see i like the set out everything shows you the basic placement of the army everything you need to know according to the others now again these things can all seem intimidating and they're written uh coldly but when you actually read them out, because a lot of people will look at that and go, oh, God. But if you just spend five minutes at the beginning of the game reading it out together, taking it in turns with your friend, well, I'll read this paragraph, you need the next one. Then after that, you read it together, you're bonding. And then after that, you also, there's no quibbling. You read out the rules, you know what's going on. It's actually well worth it. Just as, a, you know, while you're talking about and all such things, having fun, read it out while you're talking about your, your wife, your kids, or husband, whatever, and you're having, you know, building up your rapport. You're about to spend two or three or more hours with someone. Build that rapport. Have some fun. Enjoy it. Right, anomalous readings. Right, more missions. Lying in wait. I'm dramatically named. I love it. Power spike. Ooh. Ah. A little bit of flavour buff there. I like that. I've missed that. It's on the previous ones. They all, they've all got a little flavour piece. 
I do love the flavour pieces. The little bits, I really need to put more into the videos again. I'm sorry I've not been doing as many quotes of people talking about things. And I should really get back into that. Data acquisition. Combat patrol mission. Alright, uh, regroup. Okay, so well, this is quite good. It's a chunky book. Uh, for what it is. Uh, is it cheap? No, it isn't. It's uh, more than a codex supplement. So, I am happy that it, it's looking easy to use. And again, it's ring-bound like this because this is the kind of book you're going to be taking and using on a regular basis, much more even than a codex. A codex you will leave open and you'll flip between the pages. This kind of thing you will flick through quite a bit, I would imagine. So, hence the ring binder. They thought it through. They looked at their product and gone, okay, what is this going to make this useful to the punters, to the players, to our great congregation of War Warhammer fans. Yeah, it's the little things as much as the big for me. As I've always said, the Shroud. Incursion mission. One will presume that you go through the different types of mission to develop the story of what's going on inside the prior sector as much as what's just going on in your own army. I know I've said that before, but I'm, I'm actually quite bowled over with this. I do like new missions. One of my favourite things was actually just to get the open war uh, deck. I'll explain that another day. Hopefully they'll bring out another one. Uh, I don't know. And it just threw absolutely madness into the game. And I love that because then, because I wasn't playing competitively when I did that, it really enforced and, and nailed down the fact that it was a fun game. Not a match, not a battle between me and my instead of opponent my other storytelling GMing friend. Uh, air Games Mastering, sorry, ancient term for an ancient old fossil. Right, fighting retreat. Oh, where all the ejectors go, etc. I like strike force missions. The fact that they've got different types of mission as well allows you to really set the tempo for the game. Oh, shall we play a strike force mission? Or shall we play a, an incursion mission? What do you reckon, matey? Let's get on with this. So all of these things are really excellent. Also, when there's so much variety, it means that a game doesn't get stalted, it doesn't get stale. Each battle is different. We've all played a computer game or any other kind of board game or challenge situation where it's generally been the same each time. And it's uh, you can't replay them for long. To, to this, this means that you could sit around with your mates for an entire week and play a different mission each battle and never repeat. Would it make it an entirely different experience? No, you're still playing Warhammer. But if you look at it that way, you're just two people or more playing moving little figures around. Um, so if you step back from all of that cynicism, then yeah, each and every single game is going to have a different complexion, a different need. Any army that you have formed is going to be strong at one mission, but necessarily weak in another. And that's going to be very good for army building as well. And there is a preponderance for people to take only the blue tooth, the blue chip units. And they don't see the utility in some of the others. Yep, some of the units out there may not do as much damage, may not be as uh, it, tough, um, may not be as complicated. But they do something very simple. They move forward or they move around quickly, allowing you to grab objectives. And there's people with what is called a take on all comers, attack army, which have versatility, uh, which generally can stick with an army design and then just go, oh yeah, I have to play them because I know what I'm doing with them. Whereas if you continually tailor your army, so I'm playing orcs and I know that someone else is going to play Eldar, I'll obviously take the guns which blow the, uh, the hell out of things flying in the air. Whereas with those games, it, it's more of a case of it's more of your choices about your army than it is anything else. Much more than, say, a take on all comers army. And you end up just tailoring your army to each opponent you're going to fight. If you, say, arrange it the week before. Oh, I'll play my orcs. You play your, you know, your Eldar. Great. Uh, and you end up just trying... It becomes a very quickly an arms race. So, if you do get into a situation where people keep on tailoring, tailoring their armies, just say to them, I will play you. I will play you. But I won't tell you what army I'm playing. Um, and if you can't do that, then I can't play. It's a simple case. Um... I'm not being mean about it. You have your conditions, I have mine. If you need to know what army I'm playing, then I'm not playing. 
uh, what I need to know is how many how many points. That's it. Um, or oh, well you can drill down in every single way. Don't ever be aggressive about it. Just realise that if you, the two of you have a different idea of how to play the game, you are actually probably playing a different type of game entirely. Because um, the game is not just the, the mechanics, the rules. It's about choosing what kind of game you're going to play. Are you going to play competitive? Are you going to play just a simple match game? Are you going to play narratively? Are you going to play a crusade game? So there's lots going on there. And again, if you say... It's like someone saying, I like sci-fi films. What they actually mean is, I am a Star Trek fanatic. And someone else says, oh, I like sci-fi films too. And they both agree to hang out. And one of them gets the popcorn out, the other one gets the videos, and he brings over the entire collective work of Star Wars. And obviously, neither of them are going to be happy because uh, the other guy just wanted to watch Star Trek. He wants to watch Star Wars, and they're going to then fall out over it. So it's very important to actually just be very candid with the person you're going to play with. If you don't know them, just be open, be honest, be nice. And just say, look, I'm looking for a really great game. Uh, it is a game, if you're very competitive, might not want to give it a go. Or you could say to them, on the other, uh, on the other side, I'm practicing at the moment. I'm all not lying. I am practicing for a tournament. I love playing games. I, I would love to play a jolly game, but it will be very specific. It will be very tight to the rules, uh, not relaxed at all. And as in not, not relaxed, as in not relaxed about the conditions of the game. And I, I need to practice and, and I would love to be able to, I said, I'm going to be there trying to pan you into the ground and I want you to do the same. Can you do that for me? And if you're not in that mood, just say, oh, I'm sorry, buddy, I, I just can't do it this time. I just don't have the, the, the head for it. Um, but maybe next time. And anyway, I, I think, you know, playing against me when I'm not particularly a competitive player wouldn't actually help you um, because I'm not doing all the conventions that other people do in that scene. So therefore, I could actually teach you bad habits. So if you see it from that perspective, um, let's just agree that, Dude, I really hope you do well at the competition, but oh, I'm not going to do it this time. Please don't take offence. If they do, then, well, you know, it's probably just stress from other things, isn't it? Now, data sheets. All of the explanation of what they do, what they're about, is all here as well. I've been flicking through pages and waffling on like a waffle machine. Sorry about that again. Okay, basic rules, missions, army, keywords. Okay, so it goes through some of the... Ah, so the basic rules are here as well. Data sheets. Oh, right, move. Oh, right, so the back of it is a reprint of the rules for convenience. So, this also acts as not just the rules that you will be using for that game, it is a smaller collection of the general rules, so you don't have to carry around what is quite effectively a cat killing. Not that I endorse any form of killing, but you could kill not only a small mammal like a mouse, you could probably beat to death a small dog with that. And not that I would ever do that, though, as we all know. It's just a silly thing to say. It's just hyperbole to explain how heavy that book is. So this is quite cool as well. Um, people will say, well, I'm getting a reprint. I'm not very happy. But on the other hand, again, this is a utility document. It's We'll have a look at it when we're finished. So we've got the entire rules here, yep, all in depth, so if you two do have a disagreement, and again, best thing to do with a disagreement is to say, okay, I've got this perspective, you've got that perspective, if, do we want to look up the, in the books or not? If so, then it's one to three, it's me, four to five, six, it's you, boom, roll the dice. If they say, no, I must learn, that can be a very good thing. Uh, no, we must play it according to the rules, because I'm going to competition, I've just really described already, or... I'm just going to dig myself in, then the only answer is, then let us read the rules. Um, and that's how you accumulate it. And they'll say, but I know the rules. Well, that's fine. That's no problem. Let's just check it. There have been nine editions now of the game. Uh, much disinformation from different people um, online. So let's just check it all. And if they can't accept that reasonable answer, it's time to pack up your troops and go, dude, let's just not do this. Again, there's no problem. Oh, you're waking away, you're weak. No, I'm choosing to t spend the rest of my five hours I've allotted to having fun on having fun in a different way. I'll go talk to the shop manager or I'll go down to the pub or a coffee shop. I'll talk to someone else. I'll go home and repaint my figures. Or I'll paint some more, whatever. But it's better than standing for four hours playing against someone, three, two, whatever, who you 
are not going to see eye to eye with because it sours the entire gaming experience. I'm being forced to play. Forced to play? Hmm. Uh, no, no. As soon as you're 18, you <laughs> and even before then, really, you should never be forced to play. Right, terrain features. I do like the idea of terrain being much more important this edition. Again, I've not played enough to actually get into that. But all of these different rules, all in a very easy place, is great. Terrain traits. And again, these things seem, seem intimidating, but they're not. If you mark what they are next to the, you know, the building, and after you've played about five, ten games, you'll know this all backwards anyway. Don't assume you need to know it all immediately. You don't. You don't need to know every single move uh, and every football has ever been before kick, picking up a ball and kicking it round. Just say to yourself, I will learn it as we go. Don't make it intimidating. This is your hobby. This is your sanctuary. This is your relaxation. Treat it with some respect for yourself because this is supposed to lower your stress levels and put a smile on your face, a jump, a spring in your step. Okay, describing different terrains, all very clear again. It's like the, the argument destroyer's handbook, isn't it? Sorry, argument resolver's handbook. Objective markers, rare rules, rare rules. <laughs> Benefits of cover when not in cover. All right, yeah, fact destroyers. <laughs> um, frequently asked questions. Okay, yep, here we go. Repositioning a replacement units. Rules Glossary. That's very nice. I like that. Okay. Right, so, what do we think of it? Okay. What do we think of it? I think... Well... It's presented very well. Uh, it's upholstered fine. Upholstered? It's got that little band I like, so it keeps it handy. Because otherwise it could naturally fall to pieces earlier. It'll fall to pieces anyway if you're a mad player who plays once a week, not mad, as in you know, you're well into it and you're playing on a regular basis. Then yeah, this could take some serious damage. That <laughs> actually add to its longevity for quite some time. Um, I love the fact that it's got the full rules in it, in a very easy, very light, very small, for, for what it is, book, that's very handy. The only thing I'd say is I hope they don't do that with every book on one hand, because obviously I wouldn't want to have like five books with all the rules in. But on the other hand as well, again, it's very difficult. I know 50 gibbet I sound, but I just see all sides. Well, not all, but as many as my limited IQ can show immediately talking like a madman. Well, um, because you would have the book and if you picked another mission, another war zone, you would want to have the basics in there to have everything here. That's fair enough, I can see that. Uh, is it handy? Yes. Is it good? Yes. Is it put together well? Yes. Is it a great idea? Yes. Is it a little pricey um, at 25 quid, which is the same as an old codex? Oh, again, multiple sides. On one side, it is a bit pricey if you're just getting it for collecting or for new rules and all such things as, as a, an object of curio. Um, if you are a massive player, I think it's very well worth it. Now, I envisage this as the kind of thing a club whip together, get everyone gets in a quid or two, and you get one, or, or each one of them, and you, you put them in a small collection down the club, or as a group, so like, yeah, okay, Bernard, you get this one, John, you get this one, Frank, oh, you get this one, and I'll get this one, then we've got all of them, we've all got a copy of different ones, we can all play in different zones, but we've got the rules, whatever, we can just play it on the fly, play it quickly, and it'll be there. Um, and if you are playing on a regular basis against a heck of a lot of different people, or the same people actually, even more, probably more pertinently, the same people, it would be great to have different scenarios. Especially if you're in one of those situations where you and just one or two mates play it, 
and you're not particularly, you haven't got good scene around your area or for whatever reason you do not wish to partake in it. I think this is great. I just would have thought, now obviously you can see it's, you know, they've done the best they can to protect it, to make it solid enough to hold together, to bookend it, uh, but not quite so much that it may survive a coffee spillage. Looks wiped clean, not sure. But it is smaller. Let's have a quick look. Its strength is also its weakness. Because previously I said it was great because it was small. It is. It's brilliant as a rule book. A subject. A, a, a rule book edition. I like it. Should it be 25 quid? Well, that's between you and your wallet and bank manager. Um, that's my only point about it. I would have thought, yes, it's a great product. And yes, I suppose because it's slightly niche, they've made it 25 quid. Because not every player's going to get it. It's like not everyone's going to get, get going to get the campaign, uh, sorry, the tournament rules books um, like this. So, you know, Flaff monkeys like me will buy these ones, the Crusade mission packs, and the competitive and more serious players will get the competitive guide books like this. Um, so I suppose it's slightly higher cost because not everyone will buy them, etc. I don't know. Maybe it is all just me being old. Um, I just think 25 quid is a lot for that as one we could almost see it as a bit of a lost leader as a why because you buy this it rejuvenates uh a game it's like dlc yay it's dlc um downloadable contact you know what i mean it's an addition that makes the rest of the game move forward in an interesting way it adds new flavor to it a new zest to it but from my perspective maybe make it slightly cheaper make it 20 quid and then after that see it as maybe okay you're not making a loss but make slightly less profit on it because it keeps people engaged in the big books and keeping playing and the figures and games workshop always state categorically that they are figure producer primarily all of the rest of this the games the rules everything else is secondary to build in toys so by that rationale they should in my opinion be making these slightly cheaper as slightly less profitable to keep people engaged because a lot of people will rebuy games on or well, sorry buy games on online after two years after release if they've got a load of dlc this is exactly the same thing it keeps you interested so take it on the chin, uh, chin gw i would have thought and make them slightly cheaper but five quid 20% you can get that if you go to any of the online sellers um, so is that a big deal no just don't buy it from games workshop I guess that's my only quibble but obviously I do because I run a games workshop site so the least I can do is buy from them which I do with a smile on my face a, a, a smile on my lips because I also get to talk to the funny little Ewok fellow who runs the place. He's always jolly. How? I don't quite know. Um, obviously, a phenomenal actor to be that jolly all of the time. It makes me seem grumpy. Um, right, well. Warhammer 40k Crusade Mission Pack Beyond the Veil. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Am I looking forward to playing with it? Absolutely. Would I buy all of them? I'm not sure. Depends how many games I'm going to get in next year. And that will defend, depend on things that are outside of our my direct control. So, what does the board say? The board says, yay! If you play a lot of games, definitely get it. If you're a collector, I don't think so. But um, for regular players or club or group purchases, I think it's cooking. I think it's a hit. Well done, Games Workshop! Well done, well done.
Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Now, as always, please, no matter what you do today, do make time for fun.